And now we're going to continue with our debate. And so we're going to transport 5G. I don't know whether that's the right term. But for that, we need infrastructures. And so we're going to look at infrastructures of telecommunications. First of all, we're going to try and understand what telecommunications infrastructures are. I must confess I'm ignorant as to this subject, so I tried to see here what was the, uh, the best definition in order to uh, uh, somebody to find these telecom infrastructures, comparing them with roads, uh, motorways, tunnels, uh, etc. So the best way to get internet uh, Across, and so I'm going to introduce my uh, guests, uh, Nuno Carvalhosa, President of Portugal, and Paulo Favara, Managing Director of Antes Charles Portugal. Bem-vindo. Vamos falar inglês e português. We're going to speak in English and Portuguese, and so, and, uh, so first of all. People think of the towers between the different uh, uh, bridges in order to pass 5G almost. Good afternoon to Faria, and uh, allow me to congratulate the uh, team of APDC for the organization of this Congress. So, coincidentally, this is the most important uh, uh, business of us and Vantage Charles. So there is a, a wide group of different infrastructures. So we can talk about them as the means that uh, house the equipment which per se allowed for the transmission of data. So why is this infrastructure so important when we're talking about being online? But we need something physical. Uh, to make this connection, yes, because uh, the data uh, don't flow on their own. They they flow through equipment, and the uh, they have to be housed uh, in different types of spaces and spaces which have uh, challenges uh, regarding the engineering and security, which is very extraordinary. Paulo Favaro. Business? Are we talking about when we talk about uh, telecom infrastructures? Are we talking about towers or more than that? I think we're, we're talking about something really tangible. And one of the reflections that I have coming from uh, the previous sessions, which were fantastic, is that from uh, having the head in the cloud with the metaverse, we're now going with the feet into the ground talking about something really tangible. So when we're, we're talking about infrastructure, we're talking essentially about, as Nuno said, different type of infrastructure, di different type of landmarks, if, if you wish. We're talking about uh, big towers in the middle of, uh, of a field. Uh, we're talking about um, infrastructure that is supporting the antennas that is sitting on top of buildings, or we're talking about dedicated infrastructure specific to provide coverage to a shopping mall or to a tunnel for that matters. So we're talking about different type of infrastructures that all collectively work as an enabler for um, transmitting the signal. So we're talking about radio frequency, that has to uh, get to the final user in order for them to use the technology. But ultimately, you need somewhere where you need to place active equipment, which do not belong to us, but belong to the operators. And uh, we, are, we are talking about building, operating, maintaining, and, and uh, leasing the space on our, on our infrastructure to, to customers. So this ends up by being a f fundamental and necessary business. We all think of technology. That is, how does it get to my uh, mobile phone? How is it 5G so good? So without these... Um, Towers, we're not going to have this. So we can see that this is the, the foundations of uh, telecommunications we see today. So maybe I can t answer in two ways. First of all, yes, in physical terms, yes. The, we need the, the these are the foundations of all the communication has already been mentioned. Paulo gave a number of examples here. The equipment of uh, different types have to be housed in different types of infrastructures, but if you like, with the direct impact on the dynamics of the telecom se telecommunication sectors, activity in terms of uh, acquisitions and infrastructures, uh, telecommunication infrastructures, 
uh, for example, in Portugal, has uh, in, in this in, in terms of providing infrastructure to operators, which is uh, specialised in the development of structures, has allowed the uh, uh, provide the telecommunication operators with an investment so that will channel to into more important areas in the terms of quality of service, the differentiation, and the reinforcement of their competitiveness. To give you an example, in the last uh, the last three years in Portugal, and what is the, is the advantage of Portugal in fiber? Which was done by Artis Portugal. We're talking about five point uh, five billion euros invested in less than three years, and uh, during which we had two uh, challenging years, uh, which we hope were uh, coming to an end. So, why do the operators prefer uh, to submit to you the infrastructures instead of uh, them? Create, instead of them creating them themselves, is a question of course if it's uh, efficiency. It's a question of uh, specialization on the one hand. The question is um, natural and uh, it's the awareness that uh, the holding infrastructures is no longer a strategic factor of the differentiation between uh, um, uh, vertical operators. And uh, there's a question uh, this has allowed uh, operators to invest in uh, more fundamental areas for their uh, competitiveness. Is this a huge business in nowadays? Because people don't pay attention to infrastructures, uh, just to, to, to the rest. It is one of the great majors business in telecommunications. I, I would say so. It, it certainly is a trend that has been uh, happening in other continents for, for a while. I think that what we are seeing in Europe is happening a few years later than, than the US, say, for instance. Yeah? So uh, it certainly is a trend. So it's, um, the market is evolving in that direction. So I completely agree with uh, what Nuno was, uh, was saying about um, having these specialized players like us, which means that we're going to have a focus on uh, building, operating, maintaining this kind of infrastructure so that uh, we can free up the operators uh, from, uh, from this kind of uh, task and having them focusing on what uh, they, want to di they want to differentiate them on, meaning quality of service, type of service they're delivering, and so on. So short answer, yes, it's a big business. It's something that is growing. And uh, you've seen a lot happening in the, in the European market. I think Portugal is quite an interesting case, truth being said. But uh, I think that uh, over the past two years, you've seen uh, much more happening in, in Spain, for instance. You've seen something happening in other geographies. So you, and you're going to see more. It's, that's why there is so many mergers and fusions in this kind of business right it's, now. It's, 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 uh, it's um, a market which is pretty, pretty alive, yeah, so it's, uh, it's eating up. It's pretty alive right now. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty alive, uh, and you see, you see that. So the reality is that um, when, we, when we started our uh, relatively short history, which was just a few years back, um, just a small proportion, if you wish, of the overall sites or towers, whatever way you want to call them, were... Uh, contributed into specialized players. And ever since, since 2018, that, that has been happening a lot more frequently. So uh, new players have popped up, uh, new ones have, uh, have merged, and we'll see what is going to happen. But it's a, essentially, it's a different stage of maturity for the whole market. Yeah? As Nuno said, and correctly so, at the beginning, having a site, having a specific location was the differentiating point for, for the operators. Now. Fast forward a few, a few years, that, has that is becoming less important, so much so that operators had already started sharing the infrastructure one with the other, and it's much better to have players which are focused on this, uh, on this job rather than uh, uh, continuing it, doing it that way. The way I put it is that building towers uh, was a necessity to deliver a service, yeah, but was a bit of a hygiene factor. For, for operators, whereas for us, it's the main business, it's the core business, and, uh, and we can unlock a lot of uh, synergies, uh, a lot of, uh, um, and deliver a lot of benefits to our customers, ultimately. No, no.
So no, no, because for both of the businesses, this type of building that makes sense for, for companies to invest individually or nationally, or is it a, a business that is thinking more about the continent or more than a, a continent worldwide? So when we talk about this, this is a, a type of business that will be more if, if effective and efficient when it's more the more global it is. Well. It is a building that I would say is being explored uh, pan, pan, geographically, pan European, pan global, etc. Phoenix is a case of this, there are other players, which is a case of the specific infrastructure players that uh, operate, uh, for example, in 12 countries. Uh, SLNX, for example, uh, some players uh, of uh, infrastructures that are present in more than one continent. So, if you allow me, let me go back. It's uh, not only this is the first uh, panel uh, linked to infrastructure, so the MPDC, uh, and it, the, the, these two, uh, both of our companies are um, fairly recent uh, in Portugal, so perhaps I would just go uh, back and uh, so this is a give you some figures. I think that the 4.5 billion euros invested over the last three years it says a lot. And so in the case of Stellnex, at the moment we manage in terms of support to mobile networks with 3,000 infrastructures in the countries. This is the main business, but uh, the, the, the so there's a value chain of infrastructures of telecommunications, another number which I think is revealing is the fact that since the Excel Max was uh, uh, listed in 2015, this is 115,000 billion euros, I believe the gentleman said. And so there's different types of infrastructures adjacent to this the main uh, b b business. And so I'm at the first uh, being rather curious when Rogério uh, put this debate. He said, we said, what is this? And that is why I'm asking questions that for you are more than obvious, but for most of the people here, perhaps uh, they're not. The question of towers, we're talking about towers. Now, in, term, in competitive terms, uh, uh, what can one company offer, this is different from the others, uh, well, what to greater speed, more, more robust, and uh, how does a company become more competitive than another? So I'll ask Paolo in a minute too. So I'm not going to make com uh, com comments uh, in terms of comparison. For example, if I were a client, what would you offer me? Uh, I would say that we have a great zeal in compliance, complying with the contractual obligations, and the operators have had uh, trusted in us and the operations that have been made, and they have their needs uh, appropriately met, and uh, we can say that uh, for the sector, a while ago, I mentioned the motivation of these transactions, and this is the point of specialization, but it's not only specialization, it's uh, a company dedicated to this activity and no other activity, and companies which is our case, only wholesalers, neutral, and completely independent of their clients. So they want to maximize uh, the access and sharing these infrastructures. And so this is a relevant motivation for operators who are uh, integrated historically have these infrastructures because these incentives in uh, uh, not found the same way. <clears throat> so, in what's more, uh, what's make these more competitive from one company to the other? I mean, if I was the client and I have so two providers, I have to choose one. It's, uh, it's what? So it's what, now, what do you offer me better? Now it's, it's, it's my turn to convince you. Okay, let's All do right. it. Okay, so the, the sales pitch would be um, as follows. So I would boil it down to three things. Yeah. So quality of the of the assets the way you build essentially you want to get a good product built to uh, certain specifications according to certain regulations 
Then the second thing is, um, is about the capability to fulfill contractual obligations, not only commercially, but as well from a delivery standpoint, which means essentially making things real, making things happen and making them happen. Fast, on fast time, is important. On time, exactly. Yeah. So I was, I was about to get there. And the third thing is people. Ultimately, um, companies are about people and uh, is the kind of know-how that you can put on the table so having uh, uh, valuable professionals that are are skilled in the in the job um, making sure that you got the right know-how to to carry out all the activities that we carry out as part of our business so i would boil it down to three to these three key points quality capability to uh, to deliver on time and people and coverage. I mean, most of the time, I have no signal. I have no signal. That's your fault, guys. I think, right? I th no, uh, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, uh, <laughs> but explain us. I, th I, th I think you got a chance, probably in the next panel, to, to ask the same question to who is going to come on stage. I think. I think. Look. I think. I think that we are um, we're part of an ecosystem. Yeah. So the reality is that you cannot you cannot get coverage unless there is an infrastructure which is ready for you to get coverage. So in that sense, I think that we have to share, you know, the, the fault, if, if that is <laughs> what it boils down to. Um, we're working with the, with the operators, yeah? So ultimately, it goes back to what I was saying earlier, making things available on time, so that your coverage can benefit from that. Temos que falar, obviamente, de, de segurança. So obviously we have to talk about security. When we think about a tower, we think about a structure like any other, and I don't think that it is... Um, safeguarded. For example, if one a tower uh, does, uh, doesn't work, we are sometimes worried about that because we're not getting operation. I mean, uh, towers are very important. So how do you deal with this aspect? Well, we deal with this question with care and zeal and professionalism. And this is one of the advantages of these infrastructures are uh, assigned to entities that are devoted only to them and so I work in the health and uh, safety in the workplace and uh, this, uh, this is a point of satisfaction and pride and so we work in September 2008 we had on fail and then 2020 we didn't have one single accident in our infrastructures and so I think this is uh, very relevant when we talk about uh, over 5,000 infrastructures. How do you protect them? Well, you protect them by working. And you know, I'm the representative of many different companies from <coughs> the wide ecosystem of telecommunications. And nowadays it's quite a far-reaching ecosystem so to work with the service providers who are extraordinarily professional and they who provide these services for or who have done for quite a few decades in, in many ge different geographies and so if you allow me to ask uh, say, uh, say something about the coverage well so uh, this uh, question of specialization is economic uh, um, Implications of maximization of share means that uh, the cost is lower because we're sharing costs and we can, can create conditions so that in the end of the line, the end clients can have lower prices. And so I can, well, I can mention the fact that we have. Uh, as I'm tell, has been advantage for some time, but since we started, we've added another 300 new infrastructures, 300 new infrastructures that were built to, according to the most demanding uh, engineering requirements, because uh, Portugal is not one of the countries uh, with that uh, shares these infrastructures, uh, above a very high level of sharing these infrastructures in Europe, and so part of the infrastructures that exist in the country, were not uh, projected in according to certain engineering requirements and not built to uh, accommodate to um, different operators. But to give you an idea and improving the uh, coverage, you see, I go here, I don't have coverage, then more than 90% of, uh, of the 300 uh, 
new infrastructures we're talking about and in urban centres. So they were talking about 300 different locations of the country where the coverage was bad in, or non-existent in the past and was a good coverage. How can you protect thousands or in thousands of towers and to work the way they, they, they do? It's a problem, it's not a problem. I mean, you got a portfolio to manage which is extensive, so of course it's a, it's a challenge. Rather I'm, than not, I'm not going to destroy, but if I destroy one or two towers, is that a problem? It, I mean, I'm going to jail, but the thing is... In, probably it's it, going to be a problem. <laughs> about connections, it's easy right. to switch. Um, right, of course, I mean, it depends on the severity of the, of the issue that is occurring. In general, what, what I can tell you is that there are ways of uh, making sure that, first and foremost, uh, infrastructure are built in a proper way. So that's the first uh, uh, kind of uh, um, thing that you can do in order to, 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 to make sure that uh, your portfolio is working appropriately. The second thing is uh, constant maintenance. Um, as a matter of fact, um, uh, preventive. So not just waiting for things to happen. And then if there is uh, something like you just described, so someone deliberately um, uh, fiddling with the tower and taking it down or creating an issue, well, this is where our partnership with, um, uh, with suppliers, which are working with us in the field, uh, comes into play, which means that uh, we go um, contracting places with, with suppliers, with partners, in fact, which are helping us maintaining the portfolio. So uh, you have the certainty that people are going to, to show up at the location and are going to fix the um, they're going to fix the issue then, as I was saying. It depends on the severity of the issue. I mean, uh, if um, not a person, but uh, uh, a typhoon comes in and um, just uh, takes the tower down, well, you have to replace an infrastructure, and that, of course, is going to take some time. But then uh, that is where you can decouple a bit the, um, the coverage layer from the infrastructure layer. Yeah, they have to work together, but you can work and, and try to prevent that in terms of resilience. That said, it, you know, it will depend. We are looking here forward. And uh, if we look forward, uh, uh -huh. what's, what's going to be the future of this business? Because when we, of course, making millions, I know, billions, <laughs> but what I'm talking about is the infrastructure like per se. If I, if I, if I look to a tower, it's something old. I think that it's new and modern but we are in a digital era, so we think that we don't need towers. Is the future uh, with no towers? I mean, the signs can go up in the air in the other way, like a drone or a balloon, I think, already start to do some experience I mean, of that, no, both of you. No, no, keep me honest here, but I think <laughs> that for the next foreseeable fu future, you still need to, to deal with towers <laughs> in some, some form of shape. So, which means that uh, if we're thinking about the 5G and what is happening, I mean, you, you will need to, uh, to make sure that the grid so of, uh, of towers um, is adequate in order to um, allow the operators to deploy the 5G in, in the best way possible. Yeah? So this means that um, um, uh, you're going you're gonna to have to bring the signal as well to, to new places, which means that uh, additional infrastructure will have to be built. Then, uh, in order to support a lot of the fancy use cases that we've been talking about, at some point, you're probably going to need to densify the network as well, which means that other infrastructure solutions are going to be needed in order to complement or integrate, let me put it this way, the existing coverage. And this is the business that, that is um, um, awaiting us. And, um, and then there could be other possibilities as well. I mean, uh, when we're talking about infrastructure, it's not just these big, fat towers that we're talking about. It's as well new paradigms uh, like uh, small cities, for instance. No, no. Um olhar sobre o futuro, ou seja. So, looking at the future, and to what extent have the towers here to stay? We're going to have, uh, have them around for quite a few years. I agree with Paulo that uh, I don't believe that in the near future is going to be a solution uh, that allows us to suddenly uh, stop using the towers uh, with 5G and probably 6G when it comes, there will be a need to identify the infrastructures and networks and necessarily, and there's a paradigm that happened with 3G, 4G, and 5G, and these new technologies are introduced in the infrastructures that already exist initially, and then they have an identification process. And this is uh, going to 
so then we so we have other infrastructures like small sense microsites and it's a little bit early to uh, see uh, the mix that uh, of the different types of infrastructure in ten years time I have to do, put this question because people most of the time ask about it. It's for both of you. Yeah. We talk about safety of the towers. Now, safety of the people. Is really safe to have a tower, one of your towers, in my building? I mean, uh, as, as you say, I, I like what you said when you introduced the topic. We are infrastructure uh, players. We, we're builders, essentially. Yeah. So um, in terms of um, civil safety, yeah, so just making sure that the tower is not going to, to, to collapse and, <laughs> and, and, and harm people, yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, this is what we do for a living, so we're building... We are talking about the waves that people exactly. sometimes fear. Except, no, 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 we, we are, so that, that is not going to happen. So whenever a new infrastructure is being built, this is undergoing um, structural and stability studies and uh, we're building according to health and safety regulations. So in that sense, it's not going to, to harm anyone. So in terms of infrastructure, you got the certainty that that is not going to happen. It, it's not unfrequent that in order to comply with um, heavier type of configurations, we have to rethink the way the site is built and in order to, to ensure the safety of, um, of the people living in a building, for instance. No, no, I'm just going to yeah, Same question, no, no. So, is it, is it a concern? Well, I'm going to divide the question. I'm going to talk about the physical safety, the fact that the tower won't fall. We've had uh, episodes like at the end of 2008, there was a tornado uh, in a hurricane in the north coast of part of the country. And so in terms of the uh, physical safety of towers falling, It's improbable, and that's one. I'm talking about the waves. In case of radiations, we in Solnex, we don't know a serious study that has uh, questioned this um, aspect. And second point, the number of situations that we know about. We have measured, we've measured radiations further, further away, closer of infrastructures. The levels of, infra of radiations that we measured are much lower than the levels of radiation permitted by law. When I'm saying lower, I'm talking about 90% lower than the level uh, permitted by law. So thank you very much uh, to both of you. And so after what we've seen here today, I imagine that this subject is going to stay on the APDC agenda because we know how important you are. Thank you very much.